Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I bless God for this new week. I bless God for the opportunity to bring God's word to you. And I know one thing. See, because the word of God is real, I know it is transforming your life. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are the one Jesus said will guide us into all truth. So right now we trust you, your leadership will guide us into every truth as we speak on God's financial system. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now we've been talking about God's financial system. How does heaven operate to meet our needs on earth? Now, very important, you come to terms with this teaching. Because I realize in many years of being a believer, not many people know this. We all believe, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. We all believe the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We all believe that God will meet our needs. But how many of God's children are practically not just walking it once in a while, how many of God's children can say they trust and are working in God's financial system? You see, so I'm not talking about you need money. Now you prayed and prayed and then the miracle happens. Say, so, whoa, ha, praise God. Oh, God came through for me. If not, I would have been in trouble. Yes, but what about living there? See, that's what we're talking about. It's the kingdom of God that Jesus came to introduce to us. There is a way to live in that kingdom. Now that's all the reason Jesus was teaching everything he was teaching. Now if you don't understand the teachings and how to practically live out the teachings, then Jesus coming was in vain to you. He didn't come that we'll use him as a spare tire. You know, when we're in trouble, we call on his name. He, he, he appears and he helps us. He came to show us a new way of living, a new pattern of living. And, and, and that pattern now, we have to adapt it as our own system. Not something we use once in a while. Not something we use when we're in trouble. No, but something that becomes natural to us on a daily basis. So, now we, we know that there are angels all around. The Bible says we're in the company of innumerable um, angels. Now, how do you take advantage of that truth? If you've got angels all around you, what do you need them for? What do you do with them? You remember Elisha was with his servants. And the Syrian army came to surround them. And he shouted, Master, we are surrounded. Because he opened the window, however he saw it. And then he saw a whole army surrounding them. And Elisha just said casually to him, Don't worry. They that be with us are more than they that are with them. And then he kept like, Sir, you don't understand. And he prayed a simple prayer. He didn't pray, God, send us angels. He said, Lord, open his eyes whose eyes the eyes of the servant so that he will see so elisha wasn't asking god for an army no he wasn't asking god for protection or no was he asking for reinforcements he already knew they were there and so when he made that statement fear not those that are with us are more he made it with the consciousness of i know who is surrounding us already before the syrian army came so that's why his prayer was, God, open this young man's eyes so that he'll stop disturbing me. You understand? And by the time God opened his eyes, he screamed when he saw the army that was really, really surrounding them. Praise God. So it's not about there's a problem. So now I'm rushing to pray. I, I need a miracle right now. It's about when challenges come, what is my stay? See? When there's trouble and everyone is going down, what is my hope? What is my strength? My strength is this. 
I don't operate any account from here. Praise God. I don't operate accounts from here. I operate my account from heaven. Now, now, let's go to what Jesus said. No, we're reading Matthew chapter 6 from verse 19. That's what we're reading. That, that, these are our whole texts since last week. Now, I want to go into a real practicality of these things. Now, not just, okay, the Bible said, the Bible said, okay, how do we operate this thing? <laughs> Praise God. So, verse 19, Matthew chapter 6. Jesus speaking here. You can look at your Bible. It's written in red. Do not, I told you last week, it's a command. Do not, meaning if you do, you are breaking the law. So Jesus said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Don't do it. Why? We talked about all this last week. Not because he doesn't want you to be rich. So don't lay up treasures. No, no, no. That's not what he was talking about. He is telling you where not to lay your treasure. So you must understand that Jesus recognizes we've got treasure. See? So like you just did business with an elder colleague, you know, and your money was paid. And as he's giving you the money, he tells you, look, don't put your money in bank ABZ. Don't put your money in that bank. Now, he might be speaking from the place of experience or from the no, a place of knowledge that you don't have access to. And he says, you don't put your money in that bank because that bank is going to fold up any moment. It's the same thing Jesus was saying to us here. He says, do not lay up for yourself treasure on earth where moat and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. You see? The reason he's telling you don't lay tre your treasure here on earth is because he doesn't want you to lose your treasure. He doesn't want you to lose it. So it's important for you the same way it's important for the Lord that you keep your treasure. So he says don't lay it. He says but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven so you can actually lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. How do we do that? It says, where neither moat nor rust destroy, not where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. See that? So, I'm not supposed to lay up for myself treasure here on earth. So what do I do? Jesus is actually saying, look, operate a heavenly bank account. Can I do that? Yes, you can. How do I do that? That's why I'm teaching you these things. Praise God. So, now listen then. This is a real relationship. This is a real life that we live. So now I want to operate my treasure from heaven. And how do I do it? You see, first is to come to that place of understanding that you've got an account in heaven. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You've got to come to that place where you know that you have an account in heaven. You've got to let it sink in your mind. Let me show you something in Luke 12, verse 33. Now, Jesus speaking here, he says, Sell what you have and give arms. Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in heaven that does not fail. Where no thief approaches, no moats destroy. See that? See what Jesus is saying here. He says, Sell what you have and give arms. You know, sell what you have and give. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, when you do this, you are providing yourselves money bag. Now, money bag here actually means savings account. See, you're opening an account. 
provide yourselves money by which do not grow old. A treasure in heaven that does not fail. Did you see that? So this treasure in heaven, is that it does not fail. Fail. Now, what does it mean it does not fail? I told you last week, he's not talking about a treasure in heaven so that in the sweet by and by, you, you, when you go to heaven, you, the angel will welcome you. Oh, what's your name? My name is, oh man, your account is so full, you know. So you can actually operate here. Here is your credit card. Oh, thank you, thank you, angel, thank you, angel. And another person goes, someone who's not been given. And then he goes there, hey, you're broke. No. But this is heaven. Yeah, you don't have any money in heaven. <laughs> no, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about an account. That's what he says here. An account that does not grow old and does not fail. A treasure in heaven that does not fail. No thief can approach there. No embezzlement can happen there. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Think about it. Just think about it. Note then, he says, sell what you have and give arms. So how do you put your treasure in that account? Now, you remember Jesus met that rich young ruler. And then the man asked him that question, what will I do? That I will inherit life. And Jesus told him what to do. He says, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Then come and follow me. Jesus was actually telling the guy, look, you are rich in this world. But you need to move your accounts over to heaven. That's what Jesus was telling the man. And now you find Jesus talking to his disciples after the man walked away sad. Because the man couldn't handle it. So he went away sad. And then the disciples looked at Jesus and they said to him, say, sir. We have left all to follow you. And Jesus said instantly, there is no one who has left father, mother, land, house that will not reap in this life a hundredfold. And in the life to come, life everlasting. Think about it. So he says, in this life, now Jesus told the guy, go sell everything you have, give to the poor, then come follow me. So Jesus was actually telling this man, I want you to move your treasure from the earth to heaven. That's what Jesus was telling him. So he says, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come and follow me. Why? Because you've got to start operating what real wealth is. Listen, you are broke if all you have is an earthly account, no matter how much is in that account. You know why I say that? Just one government policy or just something going wrong can sweep everything you have in a day. You remember Job. At one day, one day, everything he had went under. Why? Because all he had was an earthly treasure. That's what Jesus was saying here. He says, where thieves cannot approach and steal. That's what I want you to do. So he says, give what you have. So when we give, we are putting our treasure in heaven. Now, how does this work today? I'll tell you, it's very simple. See, when I teach you this, that you take your tithe before the Lord, when I tell you, you you've got to learn how to give by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Now, let me show you. Galatians chapter 6. Now let me start from verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For what a man sows, that he reaps also. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Praise God. My time is up. Now we're going to continue from this spot tomorrow. Praise God. Have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye.